And amongst all the federal budget activity that happened in Canberra, Parliament actually sat and got on with some other business as well. One thing that popped up that we've taken an interest in is the MP Craig Kelly, who used to be a Liberal. He's gone to the crossbenches partly because he had a lot to say about vaccination that wasn't going consistent with what the government line was. He felt in his own conscience, in his freedom of speech, he needed to be able to keep speaking about those things. And so he went to the crossbench, which has put the Morrison government on the edge of slipping into minority government. I think Mr Kelly would still support the coalition on all the critical issues. But Craig Kelly's gone into Parliament and said the Facebook ban of him, he can't have a presence on Facebook at the moment, he believes that's a contempt of Parliament to impede a MP's communication with his electorate. And contempt of Parliament is a jailable offence. It's a very novel approach to the issue of censorship on social media. Now, Facebook is an organisation based in California. The executives and the people that work there lead very much in the left-wing or Democrat direction. So when it comes to terms like hate speech or fake news, their take on that from the censors at Facebook is to lean in one political direction. And that brings me to something that the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has introduced recently in the United Kingdom. And it touches on something I spoke about with Senator Alex Antic, who I regularly chat with on this program on a Friday, about the growing reach of Facebook, Google, Twitter and these social media and internet giants into our everyday lives and also our political discussions. Senator Antic expressed interest in something that was being looked at in Eastern Europe to do the very thing that the British government have done. Britain will now forbid platforms like Facebook and Twitter from discriminating against particular political viewpoints and will need to apply protections equally to a range of political opinions no matter their affiliation. That's according to a statement from their Department of Digital Culture and Media and Sport on Wednesday. Their bill will ask their regulator Ofcom to explain how these companies on the internet should guard freedom of expression, including ways to allow people to appeal if their content has been removed, say from Facebook. And the vehicle for this legislation was laws that were initially put in place to protect children online, but now its range is being expanded to tackle issues like online fraud and now also the protection of people's expression of their own opinions. Now, these are significant reforms by the Johnson government because they reach over the Atlantic into America, companies based there that have a significant influence on what is said and done online. Time will tell whether the Morrison government, which is a similar stripe of blue to the Boris Johnson government in the UK, will follow down that same path, whether it's uh, moved by a Craig Kelly type or whether the government embraces it as government policy, especially going into a federal election. I can't really see the Morrison government embracing this willingly. They might be forced to embrace it because they're very much operating in a more purple colour, if you like, a blend of red and blue in their policies. But the bizarre thing to me is when you look at what the Johnson government is doing in the United Kingdom, they're winning elections with a very strong pro-Britain Brexit-focused policy and taking on Europe. And they are putting Labor well back into opposition for many years to come with very strong conservative and nationalist policies. The Morrison government certainly seemed excited about taking on and staring down Facebook, Google and Twitter and the like when it came to them paying tax in Australia and when it came to them paying for media stories in published in Australia, are they going to stand up for your free speech, given the beating they've received from the Canberra Press Gallery and Metropolitan Media when they've tried to speak up for free speech before? I wouldn't be holding my breath.